Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing the high-end makeup tag. I love a good tag video, so let's get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. But today we're gonna dive into high-end makeup. So this tag was created by Jenna Fraze and Kelly Gooch where they came up with what looks like 14 questions having to do with high-end makeup. Now if you're new to my channel, while I do love all makeup from affordable, drugstore, high-end luxury, I definitely have a focus on high-end and luxury makeup on my channel. So this one was a really fun one. So I'm gonna put down the links to both Jenna and Kelly's video down below for you to see if you would like to see more. Uh, yeah, thank you ladies for coming up with this tag because the questions are so fun. So let's get into it. So question number one is if you could only use one high-end brand, what would it be? For me, that would have to be Charlotte Tilbury, hands down. While I do love a lot of other luxury and high-end makeup brands, I do have to say, as far as the entire range goes, I love Charlotte Tilbury. I think she has some of the best complexion products. She has some of the best powder products. Just as a whole, I think her range has my favorite makeup products in most categories. So that's why it has to be Charlotte Tilbury. She just, she has the best. Her eyeshadows, amazing. Eyeliner amazing foundations not my favorite but I can make do um, but sh there's something about the way that her products look all together as well they just they work so good together as they should because it's you know one brand all of their products should work together but as a whole she definitely has some of my favorite products so if I was only stuck to one brand hands down Charlotte Tilbury number two what is the most underrated high-end brand and for that I chose a brand that is fairly new so right now it's underrated but I really do have a good feeling about this brand. It is a Canadian brand so they aren't sold in retailers right now. You can really only pick up their products online as far as I'm aware. But the brand is called Vesca Beauty. It is a new brand that I discovered and they are so underrated. I've heard a couple larger YouTubers talk about them but not quite enough. We need to get more focus on this brand. First of all, their mission, their inclusivity, everything is amazing. Even if you look at their Instagram you will see the inclusivity of the brand, the inclusivity of the range of products. So they don't have the biggest line right now, but I want to get their name out there so we, we can get more from this line because their packaging, where the products are made, the quality, I'm fully in. So just so you can see, one of the products that I've been trying lately is the Soft Sun Radiant Skin. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is made in Canada and then their brand Bronzer has also been one of my favorite products. You know, it's a cruelty-free brand. This is made in Italy, like... <laughs> vegan cruelty free amazing amazing they definitely have a high-end makeup price and it is a little bit more difficult because you can only purchase it online but i've been loving their products so they are definitely an underrated brand in my opinion <laughs> what is the most overrated high-end brand hear me out okay this brand most certainly does have some amazing products that are not overrated but I think as a whole, I find Fenty Beauty to be a bit overrated. I find their products to be kind of inconsistent. I I have some products that I love, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love their bronzer. I love their lip glosses. But, like, that might be it, you know? I don't really like all of their products. Now, they've done some great things in the industry, and I don't want to take that away from them. But as far as quality of their products. I do think that their quality is a bit overrated. I don't like their complexion products really at all and I feel like they've had some launches that came off as very cheap to me and not very well thought out and it's hit or miss because some products they really do have are great but there's some that I just they're huge misses for me so unfortunately Fenty Beauty is an overrated brand for me and it's just so highly talked about, highly rated, all of that which is why I find it to be overrated you know if it was a little bit more under the radar I probably wouldn't say that but it's just everything they come out with they get so much praise and I don't think everything is that great from them 
Number four, what is your favorite high-end product that is under $50? And I was thinking about some staple products that I will always, always have in my collection. And I had to go with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is my all-time favorite primer before makeup. It's more so just a lightweight moisturizer, which is why I like it. It's so highly moisturizing and hydrating. I haven't come across a product that really preps my dry skin better than this product and it's under $50. I mean, I was I was being picky, you know, I was thinking about eyebrow products as well, really items that are staples, but in my opinion, this cannot be replaced, so this has to be my favorite high-end product under $50. Number five is what is a hidden high-end gem from the high-end beauty category that nobody talks about. And for me, I just don't think the Becca lipsticks get enough love. I am obsessed with their color range, with their formula. They have an Italian formula, so it's really creamy, very rich in pigment. And these for a while were all on sale because I'm assuming they couldn't sell these. But these are, as far as high-end, probably my favorite lipsticks. You know, Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury, those are my two favorite formulas, but those are more luxury. As far as high-end, these are a little bit more affordable than luxury, and they are the best, and I don't think not enough people talk about them. They're just an amazing formula. If you can get them on sale, because I guess nobody buys them, you should do it. My favorite shade is Sugar. It's just like the perfect, cool nude, but it also goes good with warm looks as well. I'm into like a peachy nude right here. This is Dune. I just, I love their nude ranges in particular. So their colors are so good. The quality is so good. And nobody talks about these, but they are amazing. What is your favorite high-end foundation? So this is a luxury foundation, but the Dior Air Flash hands down. I use this for my wedding. I use this for any special occasion. She's expensive and she runs out quickly, so I don't use her as much as I would like, but this is the most perfecting foundation in my opinion. Now, it doesn't, you know, cover everything. It's not full, full coverage, but it makes everything look so smooth. It lasts so long. It just gives the best looking finish. Your skin looks poreless, and I've talked about this plenty of times on my channel. It's Every time I wear it, I'm like in love with my makeup. It's because of this foundation. It really, really, really is the best, okay? Oh, number seven was so easy. It's what products do you tend to buy more at the high-end price point? Eyeshadow palettes. I am a snob when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. I really do find there to be difference between drugstore and high-end. Now, that being said, I am wearing a BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. That's really, really nice. But with the exception of a couple brands, high-end is where you need to go for eyeshadow palettes. I mean, my eyeshadow palette collection is ridiculous. I own hundreds of palettes, huge snob over here. It, there's a huge difference between high-end and drugstore, so eyeshadow palettes are a must in the high-end category for me. And they're, of course, just my favorite thing to buy because they're so pretty. Number eight, what high-end brand do you think is overpriced? I'm not saying that this brand doesn't have good products, because they certainly do, but I do think they are overpriced for what you get, because the packaging never screams out to me, and I feel like you get a tiny bit of product for a huge inflated price. So I'm going to have to go with Shantikai on this one. Now, I know they are an independent brand, they have a smaller team, and there are reasons for their products to be very highly priced, but I just... I have problems justifying paying for their products a lot of times. Their blushes, I love them, but they're so expensive. Their single eyeshadows are kind of ridiculously priced. And I'm not saying they don't have good products, because most of the time they do, but it's very highly skewed compared to a lot of other brands that I personally purchase from. So for me, I do find Shantikai to be a bit overpriced and I'm walking very lightly on what I'm saying because I do like the Shantikai products but just go on their website look up the prices and you will see what I mean number nine is what is your favorite high-end limited edition product more so this was a reformulation and the reformulation just does not beat the original this is the original La Mer the powder the new one has some sort of weird shimmer in it and this one makes my skin look super duper soft and it is way past its expiration point at this time but I don't care it still works I use it for special occasions I just it is a shame 
a shame what they did to the new powder. It's still a good powder. Like, I don't want to take that away from it. But this one is just so much better. It's my all-time favorite powder. And I can never get my hands on this formulation again. I don't even... This wasn't limited edition. They just reformulated it. But you can't get it, get it anymore. So I, I needed to complain. And I, I needed to take this opportunity to complain. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Number 10, what's the best high-end formulation for eyeshadows? I mean, do you even follow me if I don't say Pam McGrath? Of course you have to know I'm going to say that. Now, it, it is semi a tie between Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. But overall, like if you're going to spend the money, it needs to be on Pat McGrath in my opinion. Because these shades right here in her 10 pans are all you're going to need. Now don't get me wrong, she has a nice shimmer formula, she has a nice matte formula. All of the above are great, but then when you're spending $125 for a palette like this, these four shades, they're just so glittery and pretty and shifty. Now this is the Divine Rose 2 palette. Uh, all of her palettes are exceptional no matter what palette you get. I just wanted to show you this shade right here. Crazy. So any palette that you get from Pat McGrath, it should be a Mothership palette if you don't have one because they are life-changing in my humble opinion. So that's the best. But of course, um, if you want a bigger bang for your buck, I would say Natasha Denona across the board probably has one of the best formulas as well because her shimmers are just so creamy. Her mattes are just so pigmented and blendable. So Natasha Denona is also up there. But as you guys know, Pat McGrath formulation has a special place in my heart. So it's, it's my favorite high-end eyeshadow formula. Number 11, what's the worst high-end shadow formula? And... I was like toggling between Too Faced sometimes can have a pretty bad formula and there's just some other brands where they've come out with bad palettes but as far as recently and Jenna mentioned this as well because these were like one of the worst eyeshadows I've ever tried in my life. <laughs> this is the Dior Tree Oblique eyeshadow palette. Let me just, this dark color, like nothing. You get hardly anything. It's for the price. For the price, it's appalling. Okay, you can get a decent look with the palettes. Uh, there's another one I don't, it's not even worth opening. Like, you can get a decent look with these, but the quality, the road to get there, it's just, it's not worth it for the price that you pay. Dior has such a good formula. That's the thing that makes me mad. They have the ability to create such a good formula, and this, why? Why stray away from work? what works so good, you know? Anyways. <laughs> Number 12, what high-end brand did you used to love that you're not so crazy about anymore? And there are so many, you know, as the market has shifted, as years have gone on, new brands have come out, old brands have gotten tired. Uh, but I would have to say probably Too Faced because I used to want everything that Too Faced came out with. And now it's just cheap, repetitive crap. Like, listen... Too Faced does have some stuff that I like, and if I see something that I like, I will pick it up, no questions asked. I don't think every product they come out with is bad, but it's like, they come out with so many products, and only like 20% is worth buying. You know, they just, they need somebody new on the team, somebody fresh, somebody to tell them to slow down and dig into the quality. Like, that's all they need to, they need to move forward. They're just moving backwards. Like, Too Faced, can still be saved, but it's about if they want to be saved. You know, just my thoughts. What high-end product did you not expect to like, but it totally wowed you? So that would be the Rare Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I thought they were like pretty cheap and I didn't think they looked like they would be a good quality. I wasn't excited about these. I wanted to do a review, so I picked them up anyways. And like I said, they weren't the most expensive. Yeah, I don't know, they just didn't look that good to me. I was wrong, 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 wrong. The formulation on these are beautiful. They're all shimmer palettes as well, which I was like, ooh, why would they do that? But you can actually get a beautiful look with just using these. You don't even need a matte. And the palettes really do inspire me as far as color story-wise. They're beautiful, they're pigmented, the finish is great, they blend together beautifully. It's crazy how good these are. So I highly recommend these if you can still get your hands on them. I was shocked. Utter shock, for real. Number 14, this is the last question. What is your favorite high-end eyeshadow palette right now? 
that was tough. I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I love. They are my babies. But I think of the moment just with the current colors that I enjoy. It has to be the Natasha Denona Glam Palette as of right now. Okay? I have a lot of a lot of other contenders that I could have chosen. But, you know, just what I want to grab for every day. It's going to be this palette. I, get a closer look at her. Okay? This, this, look, Morgan Turner. All of this. Morgan Turner. So, yeah. Formulation on point. Color story on point. So, currently my most used, my most favorite, my most coveted. It's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much to Jenna and Kelly for creating this tag. It was a fun time to put all of my answers together. If you are interested in doing this video or at least answering them in the comment section for funsies, please go ahead and do it. I had a blast. So, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.